Hello and welcome to my continued exploration into KSP's hard career mode, this time in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.2. That's significant because 1.0.1 brought drastic changes to the atmosphere and we'll have to see how those turn out. Currently the atmosphere of Kerbin is clearly in a state of flux. The live stream you're about to see was broadcast on May 1st. I'm cutting out the slow parts for YouTube and retaining as much of the original live commentary as possible. Since it was a live stream, video quality is lower than I usually have for my YouTube videos, so apologies for that. Just a reminder, you too can participate in the live stream chat by following me on Twitch. I go by the same name I do here, Tyler Rays. Now, on to my commentary from May the 1st. If you don't have 1.0.2 now, do get it because it's got a bundle of fixes and 1.0.1 had a bad little bug wherein if you splash down with it, it would uh, overheat your vessel and so you'd be in literally a bunch of hot water. So 1.0.2 and I'm starting a little bit early because I want to ponder exactly what I'm going to do. So you saw in the little menu there, I've got Sandbox, Sandbox Test, that's for the Sandbox series. Um, so I posted a video with the G uh, GBN, and so the GBN flight was done in the Sandbox one. Sandbox Test is to test the craft before I move it on to do actual missions and recording. So that is what I'm doing there. Now let me remind myself, because I've been doing a lot of Kerbal stuff in the background here and I did the colonization series and realism overhaul recently as well so I have to refocus here and we need science data from space around Kerbin, science data from the surface of the moon that's gotta be a tougher one now they've fixed things and I'm hoping that certain very significant bugs that for instance caused the death of Jebediah uh, are fixed that is a thing I sincerely hope, but, oh, hmm, we've got a flag issue here. I thought I had put the, my flag in, but uh, it doesn't seem to see it. Okay, well, uh, for now, let's just go with that. Okay, we need to send some science, uh, we, we'll, let's just take care of the transmitter recover scientific data from space around Kerbin 1. Let me quickly check what the what the value of that is, how many funds we get. Uh, somebody pointed out on my YouTube videos in the comments that I didn't notice but we we had to pay for hiring those two extra pilots and that that ended up uh, knocking us down quite a lot in terms of our funds. Problem is we've done most of the obvious things Mystery Goo, Materials Bay, Temperature Scan We'll have to do one of those zero ones. I'm trying to figure out, okay, uh, EVAs we get here. So if we paid 150,000, we could do an EVA, but that's that's pushing it. What I really want is to prove a Dobodyne Octo. That's the, that's the piece I want right now, because then I can land on the moon. As long as I have that, I have confidence that I can get it to the moon. But we're not there yet. Maybe maybe unlocking EVAs would allow us to do that. But that is going to cost us 90 science. Now, the way I figure it, we're going to have to do EVAs, but we don't have much of a budget. And to unlock EVAs, we need 150,000 funds. We don't have too much science to do in orbit. Science data from space around the moon. That's that's more like the kind of thing we could do right now. We could do that. That's gonna cost us four thousand if we fail this one. Let's just do a quick launch and get some science from space around Kerbin uh, by just doing a null experiment and just move on because I need the cash. And if they haven't fixed that problem, then I'm. I guess I'm going to have to exploit it. So we're accumulating funds so we can unlock EVAs so that we can get science in order to unlock the Probodyne Octo so that we can then land on the moon with a probe. Okay, here we go. So 
So yeah, this is 1.0.2. I do not have the stock bug fix modules in here because I'm hoping that they've actually fixed those things. It's tough to say. We don't need to go into orbit, we just need to get into space. They've changed the aerodynamics a bit. Uh, actually, the GB, which I have in my sandbox series, now doesn't work quite the same. Not that it doesn't work, it does, still does an okay job. This is probably overdoing it for space. Yeah, two updates dropped today. Uh, the bigger one, I mean, 1.0.1 changed quite a lot. It's like, like I was saying, uh, aerodynamics was... Uh, there, there's some significant changes there, judging from my testing in Sandbox. Okay, I'm not going to go any further than this. Yeah, so I have been trying to do recoverable stages. And they have a very different attitude when you get 1.0.1. Your 1.0 is a glitching mess, crashes all the time, and stuff doesn't load up or com just completely disappears. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> that has me worried. I, it's not like I've put anything up that that is meant to stay up so far. Uh, so far I've just been uh, bringing it all back down so I haven't had much experience and of course with all these tiny little things I'm not doing anything that's gonna be particularly taxing for the game. So yeah uh, that's a little bit I hope uh, 1.0.2 fixes that but uh, since I didn't have the problem in the first place I, I don't know how to replicate the problem. Okay, so I'm gonna log temperature. Oh, recovery is extra. Okay, uh, well then I'll just keep the data. Okay. Alright, so we actually got some science out of this and in addition to fulfilling, hopefully fulfilling the contract once we get it back down. So maybe I want to boost back just to get closer to the KSC. I'm going to go this way and just burn the rest of my fuel this direction. Uh, you also kept getting launch clamps spawning on your craft during flight. Okay, that's that sounds weird. Well, be sure to update uh, KSB as much as possible and any mods involved. You got that launch cramp issue too, Sean. Okay, well. Okay, so I'm going to. dump this. It's a little bit dark here. There's the pod. Okay, this might be bad. The blader is not really melting off very much. Oh, you, you have to do some pretty serious stuff in order to get this uh, in any trouble. Daily reentry. Daily reentry would have killed that thing. Um, so, yeah, very interesting. Science alert. Yeah, I've never played with science alert, but I can see how that, that might be. I mean, obviously, that's helpful. And it, there might come a time when you couldn't do without it if you're used to it. Yeah, he's 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 <laughs> he he's used to these G forces. Apparently, they put them through some serious training in those centrifuges or something. Okay, I'm certainly glad they fixed that splashdown bug in 1.0.2. Recover. Anyway, uh, we got funds back for the recovered parts, but we should have gotten the contract fulfilled. Uh, yep, so now we only have one contract, and that's for science data from surface of the moon. Let's see if we've got some other interesting contracts. I want to do this science data from space around the moon. I'm sure that is... I, I really... 
there are these interesting contracts for ferrying tourists. I should do that sometime, but let's launch for the moon. Heck. They should give us a Minbus contract at some point, shouldn't they? It looks like we can do goo containers around the moon. Let's do that. Okay, so this is our moon rocket, clearly. This has, okay, it has uh, two batteries is what it has. We can take this off. Let's get, pick a flag again. Let's go with, nah, that's a little bit too lofty. Um, sure, carbon moon flag, that's, that's appropriate. Okay, and some goo containers. Probably shouldn't be picky about these beginning craft, but anyway. Uh, those goo containers have probably gone overheat a bit. The batteries are worse, though. Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna go like this, and we'll just call it Beta 5. And... Um, uh, nope. Uh, Gusper didn't even get any, uh, experience for that last flight. I'll, I'll send Sidri there. I don't think Sidri will get much either, because... Uh, moon. I think everybody's got enough to cover the moon now. I don't want a time warp, so let's just get on with it. It's uh, dusk, I think, or is it... Uh, yeah, I think it's dusk. Alright, let's see now. Sidri, let's go. Batteries make good sacrifices. Yeah, but just on principle, I don't like things blowing up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, blowing up somewhat signifies that you've done something wrong, I think. Now, the thing is, with the adjusted aerodynamics in 1.0.1 .1 and 1.0.2 from from uh, the original release, uh, I don't know exactly how our previous, you know, we ent tried to uh, air brake at 30 kilometers and then uh, do the full re-entry at above 20. I don't know how that's going to work out now. I don't know if that's still an okay idea or if it's uh, dicier now. Kerbal God of Batteries. Well, if it's a God of Batteries, would it want batteries as sacrifices? Usually gods want want sacrifices of other things, right? You know, the gods of humans want animal sacrifices kind of thing. Still not a efficient launch profile. Actually, with I've been testing recoverable stuff in Sandbox for that series, the Sandbox EDB series, and it looks like uh, you could go down to to 30 degrees pretty quickly. As long as you fall pro grade, of course. Okay, let's hold off on that. Let me see where we're at. We're getting up there. Probably low throttle. Half throttle seems like a good idea at this point. New far. Gonna change everything as far as RO goes. Yeah. <laughs> Which means I'm gonna have to figure out everything all over again. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, but that's, that's, that's the fun part. New far is the, uh, the update to Ferrum Aerospace Research, which so far has been the go-to thing for getting a decent atmosphere in this game. What's the point of it now? Because actually the stock aerodynamics is still a bit wonky. Uh, well, still a bit. Yeah, uh... <laughs> It's better, but it's not great. Yeah, the crispy bacon's got the uh, because what what's happening now? And I better stop this because we're we've got high enough apoapsis. What's happening right now is that it's calculating the the whole thing, the aerodynamics based on attachment points and the tree. So it's just looking at the attachment tree and seeing how using that as a basis for what the shape of your vessel is. Uh, Nufar is going to more like X-Plane Jr. Okay, well, we'll see about that. I've got X-Plane as well, but I, I don't play around with it that much. 
I want it to because it's got the you know airplane designing function built in but uh, yeah so basically it's gonna take the actual shape of your vessel it, uh, I'm, I'm not very technical so new far is gonna be a much better model very slowly getting into orbit uh, looks like uh, soon after we get into orbit we should be able to transfer to the moon didn't even really need, need to make full orbit honestly but might as well there it is okay to the moon still waiting for visual enhancements etc you miss your clouds and thunderstorms yes thunderstorms I never had much of but uh, that's uh, that's additional stuff uh, but uh, environmental visual enhancements itself I I'm definitely waiting for I don't know I, I should check whether it still works it could still work there's no particular reason why it can't still work okay still haven't unlocked the maneuver nodes so here we go again but this is a much better transfer than the one I did with Val so so it should work fine okay here we go um, electric charge looks stable everything looks fine Sidri you've got your goo let's go well at least uh, heading over to the moon on the flyby is getting to be fairly routine for our Kerbals now and they always manage their crash courses not the best approach maybe I should change my inclination as well I should have done that in the first place uh, it looks like I should be going west on this is that right? yeah hmm maybe more like this then This is strictly unnecessary, but in the interest of neatness. Getting a little bit high there. I want to get near to near to the moon, so we need it a little bit tighter here. Okay, that'll be good. Mystery goo here. Okay, we'll keep that. 1.0 put an asteroid belt around Dres. People keep saying to visit the Dres asteroids, and none of the streamers actually did, I think. I, I, at least everybody kept saying that, but uh, I don't remember anybody actually doing it. Maybe I missed it. Um, I haven't checked. I haven't checked uh, if there is some asteroid business going around there. All right, we should be decently close to the moon. Alright, we're gonna keep that data. Let's hope the goo containers don't burn up on re-entry. That's all I'm saying. I think their heat tolerance is like 2,000 degrees, so it shouldn't be a problem, but we'll see. Okay, out we go again. Okay, retro burn. So, what altitude? I'll go with 30 kilometers and we'll see. Any tests for your first moon orbit? trouble getting to escape you don't need to go to escape velocity you need to go less than escape velocity escape velocity means that you're gonna be going out of the whole thing uh, you wanna stay in orbit around Kerbin. and you just wanna really elongate orbit like I've got right here so to get to the moon just a reminder you're going to want to start burning for the moon when it appears over the horizon you want your burn should be about 800 meters per second, assuming you're in a tight orbit around Kerbin. Yeah, Scott Manley is probably... is he doing a tutorial? Yeah, there's that. But really, it's it's not that it's not that complicated. You see the moon over the horizon of Kerbin. You burn towards the moon. Uh, bur just burn towards prograde. And wait until your orbit touches the moon's orbit. That's it. So, you want your orbit to touch the moon's orbit. Just touch it and that's enough you will you will eventually hit lunar sphere influence yeah I've got the beta tutorial series from point nine zero that'll explain all of it too 
So if you want to check out my YouTube videos, I've got that. And uh, the thing is, I, I actually go into the math, so watch out for that. You don't need to do the math I introduce. I just introduce it because I might as well. Okay, we are at atmospheric interface. We're retrograde. Um, now, last time, this was an okay altitude to keep our service module, right? This is an aero braking altitude where in our service module is not going to blow up. Can I do a 1.0 career Duna tutorial? Well, first I have to get to Duna in 1.0. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, uh, first I have to get to Duna in 1.0. I don't think it's uh, fair of me to try and create a tutorial if I haven't done it. I mean, my expectation would be it's, you, you're going to need some engine power to slow down at Duna. And you're probably going to be overheating a little bit. Interplanetary travel and KSP? Uh, well, uh, I do have videos on that on my YouTube. So, again, my beta tutorial series. Uh, the first episode of it is my most popular video. That series does cover interplanetary transfers and everything about interplanetary transfers should still be applicable to this version. I'm just going to tell Sidri to hold retrograde, shouldn't I? Uh, well, once I get a contract to go to Duna, I will. Um, tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll try it over the weekend at some point, uh, just on my own. I don't know, maybe during a live stream, maybe not. Uh, hold on a sec. This has brought us down a lot more than it did in the previous version, in 1.0. Yeah, we, we can try a sandbox launch to Duna. But right now, I'm wondering about the aerodynamics myself, because in 1.0, we still had a fairly high orbit after air braking at 30 kilometers. Now we are at a... well, we're coming down, basically. On the dark side, which is unfriendly, because it's on the opposite side of the planet from where we want to be. Okay, um, we're going up at our apex, at our apoapsis, I'm going to dump the service module. Holding retrograde eats up battery like crazy on re-entry for you. Um, well, it seems to be doing fine here. I, it depends how big your craft is, though. The larger the craft is, the more trouble SAS seems to have, or or your Kerbal. F5 before you air brake to Duna, F9 each time you fail. Yeah, yeah, you can do uh, air braking testing like that. Yeah, uh, I do that. I've done that before. Uh, just a quick save, quick load to find the right height. Okay, so how high are we going? We're not going to get very high, are we? Okay, well, while the flame effects are off, I'm going to ditch the service module. Okay, here we go. The question is whether anything will burn up. Sacrificial battery ceremonies. <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll have unintentional sacrificial battery ceremonies. How about that? So now they've they've uh, they've uh, said that F12 gives us the aerodynamic forces. So now we don't have to go into the cheat menu for it. And then temperature overlay, and then uh, temperature gauges, which which sometimes show up and most of the time don't. I guess while we're here, at least it makes the capsules show up better. We really don't need much ablator. Aerodynamics should push us to retrograde, and it looks like it finally does now. Is it just me, or... Okay, no, the parachute is there. I'm worried because the parachute isn't colored at all. I guess it's only colored at its base. This this portion is has the color, but the rest of it doesn't. Uh, okay, I guess this is the altitude we're at. Okay, uh, let me turn the colors off for now. Recover vessel. 
Okay, uh, 30 science accrued. Okay, good. And we've got <laughs> only 10% of our value back, darn it. Sidri didn't even gain any XP. Okay. So, I guess now the thing to do is to upgrade this so that we can get EVAs. It's a little bit of a risk, but I think that's that's the thing we need to do. Oh, uh, I hate I hate spending funds. Yeah, mission success, but now we've got big decisions here. L let me quickly take a look at our available contracts. Touch test the launch escape system. We might pick that up. Got a big failure cost though. Okay, through okay. We can do that. That gives us an event. That makes me feel a little bit better. Let me unlock this as well. Upgrade. This is gonna be weird. We are we're not gonna go to space with this. We're just gonna go up to nine thousand meters. We don't have to be going very fast. So it's just straight up much parachute straight down. Straight down. I don't know. It's gonna be tough landing it properly. I'm gonna do an ugly thing here. Do you suppose that'll work? Do you suppose the girder segments are gonna overheat? How oh, about the heat tolerance? 2000. This should be fine. This looks safe, right? I should raise them up a little bit just so that the uh, engine. No, raise. Guzber? I'm not gonna risk Valentina on this. Uh, this looks dicey. You know what? As an emergency. Uh, yeah. I, I don't like this arrangement at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put two parachutes on the pod. This seems like a flip over though, would it? That's too heavy. Oh, good. That solves that problem. Okay, now I feel a little bit safer. Alright, so, uh, LES test. Alright, uh, SAS on throttle is up. Okay. Let's pay attention to when we fulfill, if we fulfill these requirements. It says it has to be activated through staging. Okay, getting there and... Alright. Okay, fair enough. Good job, launch escape system. Now, let's see if we can do this while bringing all of it back down. We'll wait for negative velocity here. Uh, not too far from the launch pad. This sort of look, looks like Mercury, doesn't it? Okay, let's get it before it tips over. Recover. It looked pretty good, though. Okay, so that contract filled. We got the funds. A little bit better off. Okay. But we're not there yet. We need to get those EVAs done so that we can we can unlock the probodobodyne. 